Hey everyone, today we'll be talking about one of the graphic user interfaces provided by Python, Tinkter. It is a standard Python interface to the TK GUI toolkit shipped with Python. Now what is TK? TK is a free and open source widget toolkit. It provides a library of widgets for building a graphical user interface in many programming languages. But now since we are working with Python, we have Tinkter module. TK has a cross-platform operating system and it is written in C. Now to install Tinkter, you can run pip install Tinkter. You will write pip install Tinkter in the terminal and you'll be good to go. Please note that if you're working with Python 2, it is Tinkter, the T is capital. And if you're working with Python 3, it is Tinkter, the T is in lowercase. Uh, the spelling is the same, it's just the difference of the cases. Now to create any Tinkter app, you would basically be following these four steps. You'll be importing the Tinkter module. You'll create the main window. Now windows are the containers in which all other GUI elements live. Now what are these other GUI elements? These are widgets. Widgets can be text boxes, labels, buttons, etc. We'll be making each one of them in the upcoming videos. Widgets are contained inside of windows. Okay. And that's what the third step is. You'll be adding these widgets to the main window. You can add any number of widgets to the main window. Then you'll call in the main loop method. It is used when your application is ready to run. It is an infinite loop. Main loop is an infinite loop used to run the application. Wait for an event to occur and process the event as long as the window is not closed. Okay. We also have geometry managers, namely the pack, grid, and place. Pack is very much used, but we would not talk about them right now. We would talk about them later. Right now, we would try to get the tincter window, the master window that we just talked about above. I will write the least code to make the window appear. Let's do that. I'll import tincter. I'll write import tincter. I'll have my window, the window I was talking about, in the second step. And uh, I'll write win equals tinkter.tk. Fine. Now, tk can have a lot of arguments. So the screen name sets the display event. Base name sets the profile file by default. It is derived from the program name. Okay. Now, class name, it is the name of the widget that is currently used, widget class. It is tk here, okay. Then we have use tk. If it is true, it initializes tk subsystem. We have sync. It is used for debugging basically. It executes all X server commands synchronously. Then we have use, which specifies ID of the window for the application. Now these all arguments might not make sense to you right now, but once we start making big applications with Tinkter, you'll get the use of them. Okay. Now I'll write win dot main loop and uh, I have called in the main loop. I told you I won't be making any widget right now. I have skipped the third step and called in the main loop. Okay. Now let's run this and see if we can get the window. So I can see the window that I declared. You can even resize it. This logo is of TK software. If you search on the internet about TK, you'll see this logo. You can also add in a title to this. Let's do that. I'll write win.title. I'll give the title my first thing term window. Now you can see the title appearing. It's my first thing term window. It was TK here earlier. Now, after this, we start making Tinkter applications, but in the next video, we would talk about some Tinkter modules. Tinkter is very easy to work with, and with a very less amount of code, you can achieve a lot. So, the upcoming videos would be very helpful for you. Thank you. Hey everyone, Tinkter offers great modules, and that's what we are going to talk about today. While using a class in Tinkter, the module first assembles a TCL or TK command string. 
Now the Tinkter package is the standard Python interface to the TCL or TK GUI toolkit. TCL or TK is not a single library, but a collection of various modules. If you're not familiar with the TCL or TK, I will just write down the architecture briefly for you. So TCL is a dynamic interpreted, dynamic interpreted programming language. Just like Python, it is another programming language which is written in C. It is most commonly embedded into C applications. We talked about this last time that TCL is mostly written in C. Then comes TK. TK is a TCL package implemented in C. So what is TK? TK is a TCL package. It is used to add custom commands to create and manipulate GUI widgets. Okay. Then we have theme TK or we can call it TTK. It is a newer family of TK widgets. It provides a much better appearance. So this was all about the architecture. Now about the modules available in Tinkter, we would talk about some useful modules and to get a better idea of how they work, we will see some examples too. Now TTK is very important as a module. So it provides you upgraded widgets. So the widgets here are upgraded than the main Tinkter module. Okay. We can also talk about the color chooser module, which lets you choose a color in Tinkter. To just show you how it works, I'll write a piece of code. Now I'll import Tinkter. I'll write from Tinkter, import TTK. And I'll import Tinkter.colorChooser. That's the module I was talking about. Then I'll declare the window container. I'll write win equals tinkter.tk. We did this in the last program. I'll also give in a title. Let the title be tinkter color chooser. Then I'll define the change color function. I'll write def change color. Don't worry if you don't understand what is happening. In this program, uh, it's completely fine because we have not discussed any of it. I am just writing this as an example to just show you what the color chooser module can do. Then I'll define this function. I'll write colors equals tincture.colorchooser.askcolor. I'll use the askcolor function. And then I'll configure. I'll write win.configure pg equals color1. Now, to call on this function, I'll make a button. I'll write ttk.button. So I've used the ttk module button and not the regular one. And I'll call in the window. I'll write the text pick color and the command would be change color. I'll call in this function and then I'll pack this. Then I'll call in the main loop. Cool. So what I have done is I've made a button which when clicked will call in this change color function and you'll be asked to pick a color and it'll change the background color to that color. Cool. So let's run this and see if we can change the background colors. So I have the screen, let me resize it. Now I'll pick a color, click on this button. So I have this new window or a pop-up box you can say. I'll pick any color and select OK. And I have it as the background color. You can even change this color. Let me pick another color. Click OK and I have a different shade. Cool. So that's what Tinkter Color Chooser module can do. Now if we talk about the other modules that we have, we can talk about common dialogue module. So basically, we have many modules to create dialogues in Tinkter. This module is the base class for getting dialogues. We can also have file dialog. It is used to get dialogues to save or open the specified file. We have simple dialogues for the dialogues. We can also have font module. Uh, so it is used for writing fonts. I'll just show you an example how we do that. So I'll just comment this piece of code and 
okay i'll declare a variable let it be georgia equals tk font dot font and family equals georgia size 30 weight bold that's how you declare a font and uh, you can declare a lot of things i have declared the family size and weight you can even declare if it needs to be slant if it needs to be italic or roman or if it needs to be underlined or if it needs to be overstruck you can even do that then we can have other modules like the message boxes so i'll just write down something for that too i'll import tinker and from tinker i'll import message box okay i'll just define another function so i'll write def dialog message box dot show error answer sorry no answer available okay and then i'll again declare a button ttk dot button text equals answer and i'll call in the main loop fine so let's see what we get so i have my screen and let me resize it again and i'll click on this answer button so i get a pop-up it says sorry no answer available and i'll click on ok and i'll exit the screen so that's what we have when we use the message box module we can talk about many more modules in linker we have scrolled text module, so we can get a text widget with a vertical scroll bar. It's all built in. We have idle lib module, constants module, dnd module, text module. We also have total module. It's a very powerful GUI with great applications. And I'd really like you to check out the total module because it's really amazing. And you can do a lot with total too. That's pretty much it about the modules in Linker. Thank you. Hey everyone, in this tutorial we would be talking about the button widget. So I will just explain as I write the code for creating one such button. I will just follow the four steps we discussed in the introduction video. So I'll import Tinker. I'll write import Tinker. Then I'll declare the window. That was the second step. I'll write win equals tinker dot tk. And then I'll give in the title. I'll write win dot title. And let the title be button. Okay. Now I'll declare my widget. That was the third step, adding any number of widgets to the main screen. So I'll write button, that's my variable, equals tinker dot button. And I'll give in these brackets and you can see that there are these numerous parameters that I can specify to size my button or to decorate it. So first I'll give in this master which is about the parent window. So I'll write win. Then I'll mention the text. So it's the text that I want on my button. So I'll write quit because the command that I'd be specifying. So command uh, tells you what the button would be doing. So that would be win dot destroy. So destroy is a universal widget. You can not only use it with the window container, but also to destroy other widgets like the button itself. Okay, and uh, I can even specify the height and width of the button. So I'll write width 
equals let it be 7 and my height let it be 4 okay then I can have the active background parameter so I'll write active background let it be pink so active background is basically the color of the button when you have clicked on it and active foreground let it be purple so that's the color of the text when you have clicked on the button then you can also specify the background color and foreground color let us specify that so i'll write pg equals sky blue you can also take in uh, the rgb colors but i'll take the normal ones for right now then you have foreground let it be white and then you can even specify the font let it be georgia you can give in any font arial or calibri then i'll have relief let it be equal to rich so relief is the type of border you want it can be flat groove raised rich solid or sunken okay that's all that i'd be specifying all the parameters that i'd be tell, uh, giving in for my button but there are more in place of text you can even give in an image that would be working as a button okay or you even have this justify parameter so how you want to show the multiple lines if you have a text then how you want to show those multiple lines along left side or right side or you want it to be in center so it's basically the alignment of the text but for that you would need to specify that slash n in the text otherwise it won't be treated as multiple lines you can even have pad x or pad y so pad x is for additional padding along the y axis left or right of the text and pad y is for the additional padding above or below the text then you can even have the state parameter to disable the button then you have underline so the corresponding number text would be underlined then you can have wrap length if it is positive then the text lines would be wrapped to fit within this length and then i'll get to the pack i'll pack this widget i'll write button.pack so this is a geometry manager that organizes the widgets in blocks we will talk about this very descriptively in some upcoming videos but for right now just know that it's for organizing this widget there are options to this you can give in an argument we have expand fill and side expand lets the widget take up any space on the master window fill is for taking up extra space so you can specify along y or x-axis or both then you have side it is for top left bottom right alignment where you want your button and then i'll call in the main loop cool i'll write win dot main loop let's run this and uh, let's check if our button has the parameters that we specified so i have my screen and i can see this sky blue and white combination that we specified for background and foreground and when i click on it i can see this pink and purple active foreground and background you can even see this ridge border and uh, you can notice the border width the width and height of the button and yeah okay you can even see the text and when i click on the button the window goes away as in the window is destroyed okay so everything worked as we wanted it to we could see the parameters working button parameters working and the widget working quite fine you can even get an image in place of this text so please try doing that it's very easy so that's it for this program thank you hey everyone today we're gonna talk about grouping and organizing widgets in the master window and we're gonna make use of frame class and pack geometry manager a frame in itself will work like a container. A frame is a rectangular region that would be used to arrange positions of other widgets. So basically, it is used to organize a group of widgets. So let me start writing the program for it. So I'll import Tinkter or I'll write from Tinkter import star. 
Okay, so I do not need to import every single module separately in Tinkter. I'll just write the class name. I do not need to mention Tinkter doc button or something like that. Then I'll take the screen. I'll write win equals tk in brackets. Here I didn't need to write Tinkter dot tk because I've already imported it. Then I'll give in the title. I'll write win dot title. Let the title be frames. So the third step was adding widgets. Now I will be adding widgets. So frames are also widgets that helps in organizing other widgets. I would take the button widget only since we talked about that in the last video. So to organize my buttons, I would use the frame class. Now I'll write frame equals frame and in brackets win. Cool. Because I want this frame on the window. So you can see that we can give in a lot of arguments for frame. So you can give in PG, this was for the normal background color of the frame. Then you can give in BD, that is the border size and you can give in the cursor. So the mouse cursor will change to this pattern, specified pattern when you hover over the frame. And then you can mention the size, you can tell the height and width. Then you have relief here, which was also there in buttons. So it's the same here. You can specify the kind of border you want for the frame. Here I won't be specifying anything because I would be getting some widgets over it. So it's no use. It won't be displayed. So with the frame class, I have made a rectangular area. And then I'll pack it to the left side of the screen. So I'll write frame dot pack side equals left. We discussed this in the last video while we were discussing pack a little bit. We talked about side fill and expand. I hope you remember. So I'll be writing side equals left in the argument for pack. Okay. I will take up another frame so that you can understand what frames actually do. The grouping would be clear. So I'll write frame2 equals frame win because I want this frame on the window and then I'll pack this to the right side. Okay, so I'll write side equals right. Fine. Then I'll get my buttons. I'll write b1 equals button. Now, last time when we declared the buttons, you might remember that we used window as the master argument. But right now, since I want my button on this frame, I'll write the frame variable. Okay, so I'll write frame, comma, text equals button one. Let the background be pink and foreground be white. Fine. Then I'll pack this button. I'll write b1.pack. Similarly, I'll declare button 2. I'll write b2 equals button frame, comma text equals button 2, and background color sky blue and foreground white. And then I'll pack it. Write b2.pack. Then I'll have two more buttons, B3 and B4. I'll get them on the second frame that I declared. You might notice that I have not given any commands for the buttons. So let's not focus on that because right now our main focus is understanding frames. So let me get my button 3 and button 4. I'll write B3 equals button. Frame 2. Text equals button 3 background purple and foreground white okay then i'll pack it let me get the button four button frame two text equals button four background let it be light green and foreground let it be white then i'll pack it i'll write p4 dot then I'll call the main loop. This main loop would be called for 
the master window only, the parent window. So I'll write win dot main view. So let's run this and see if we get the buttons on the left and right sides according to the frames. So I can see the buttons, the four buttons that I declared and they are on sides. Button 1 and 2 is on the left side and button 3 and 4 are on the right side because I have packed the frame 1 on the left side and frame 2 was packed on the right side. As we have not given any command to the buttons, nothing is happening when we are clicking them. You can think about how differently you can pack these buttons just like we have packed the frames. You can use the side or expand or fill arguments. And that's what we'd be talking about in the next video. We'd be discussing geometry managers. Thank you. Hey everyone. So I've always told you that we're going to talk about the geometry managers whenever we use pack. So that's what we're going to do today in this video. We will talk about pack, grid and place. Since you have already used pack in some of the last videos, let's start with the pack widget. So from Tinker, I'll import star, then I'll get my window, I'll write win equals tk. I'll also give in a title, so I'll write win.title and let the title be geometry managers okay then i'll get the widgets so for the widgets i'll get some frames and i'll pack those frames so i'll have my frame one equals frame for the master i'll give window win then let the width be 200 and height be 100 and let's have the background color to be orange okay now i'll pack this frame i'll write frame one dot pack so i'll fill this for both the axes i'll write fill equals both and side equals left expand equals true so this fill and expand is for making the frame responsive as you increase the screen size the frame will expand in both the directions and the side is to place it on left cool so let's have another frame write frame 2 equals frame when let the width be 100 background color let it be purple and I'll pack this and I'll give in the same arguments as above I'll write fill equals both side equals left expand true okay then I'll call in the main loop I'll write when dot main loop so let's run this and see how the pack works see how the frame works okay so i have the screen and as i expand it on either side if i expand it along x-axis i can see the frames increasing so you can see the two colors purple and orange so that's the rectangular area a frame makes and the packing starts from the left side because we have specified side to be left okay and you can see as i expand the screen the frame size also increases So if I want to talk about the place geometry manager, it is used to control the precise location of a widget, the location it should take up on the window or the frame. Okay, so we can give in the coordinates. Uh, it takes up two arguments, X and Y. So that's the top left corner coordinate of that widget. Okay, so let me write something for it so that you can understand it better. I already have Tinkter imported and my window. I also have a title for my window. I'll just get another frame to get my button on it. 
uh, or rather I'll get two buttons so let me have the frame I'll write frame equals frame win and let the width be 150 and height be 150 frame dot pack okay and uh, I'll have my button one so button one equals button and I'll get this button on the frame so I'll give in the master to be frame let the text be button at 10 comma 20 and let the background color be pink then I will place the button not use pack but I'll place it and I'll give in the coordinates x equals 10 y equals 20 so I'll get this button at 10 comma 20 coordinate the top left corner coordinate of this button would be at 10 comma 20 then I'll get another button button 2 equals button frame let the text be button at 40 comma 50 and the background color let it be yellow then I'll place this button again at 40 comma 50 so x equals 40 y equals 50 and then I'll call in the main loop we'll check this if this works fine and we get the buttons at the defined coordinates now when I run this I have these two buttons at the coordinates so this top left corner is at coordinate 10 comma 20 and this yellow one is at 40 comma 50 so that's the coordinates and the buttons are at the specified coordinates so the screen should be seen as a coordinate plane and the buttons are at the specified coordinates cool. so that's how place works now let's talk about grid grid has all the parameters of pack plus it is efficient than place as place needs specific coordinates grid just splits or makes parts of the screen according to the matrix given you'll understand this better if i give you an example so i already have tinker imported and i'll just comment this part first of all if you're talking about grid you need to make that grid so we'll make it just like we make a matrix i'll have two for loops and i'm gonna make a grid of three by three so i'll write for i in range three for j in range three frame equals frame master is fin and let me give in a border type so relief equals sunken that's about my frame so for each block or each matrix element i'll get a frame okay now i'll use grid for the frame i'll write frame dot grid so you can see what all arguments we can give for grid we can give the row which is i then column which is equal to j we'll give in some extra padding along x and y axis both so let it be 5 that'll look good then I'll get some buttons on these frames so I'll write button equals button and since I want this button on the frame so I'll give in master equals frame for text I'll give in the matrix elements index so i and j i hope you know this format this is general python then we'll get to packing this button i'll just use pack for this not grid or place 
I'll simply pack this button. So I'll write button dot pack. I'll give some padding. Pad x equals five. Pad y equals five. So that there is space between each element of the matrix, and also there is space between the text and the button. And then I'll call in the main loop. I'll write win dot main loop. As you had expand and fill in pack, you have column configure and row configure in grid. I want the buttons to increase in size just as the screen size increases. So I'll write win dot column configure. So you can see what all arguments it requires. So first is the index. So of course index is the row or column number. Then you have min size, which will give in the minimum size of the row height and column width in pixels. Okay. And then you have weight. Okay. So weight is the rate with which the size of the button or size of the specified widget would increase with what rate so i'll give it to be one i want all the grid elements to increase with the same rate as i increase the screen size okay and i'll give in the min size for column conf configure to be 75 then i'll also have row configure so i'll give in the index i and weight equals one and the minimum size let it be 50. so we're good to go let's run this and let's see how grid works so you can see that the screen size is not little it's there is a proper grid because we have already specified the minimum size using column configure and row configure there is a specific size of the screen because there is a minimum size of the buttons and when i resize the screen they grow in size automatically the button size doesn't grow but they are rearranged on the entire screen properly so that's it for grid that's it for the geometry managers i hope you understood everything the place pack and grid widgets they are going to be of great help in the upcoming videos. So you really need to get a grasp of what was going on throughout this video. Thank you. Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about Canvas widget in Painter. It's going to be very easy and simple. We will just see some functions provided by the class. Canvas is basically used to draw graphs and charts. To get text or images on the window we will see drawing some simple figures on the canvas let's start with it so from tinker i'll import star that's a very convenient way then i'll have my window i'll write win equals dk and i'll also give in a title i'll write win dot title let the title be canvas okay then i'll add my widget so my widget would be canvas i'll write canvas equals canvas and where do i want my canvas i want it on my window so i'll write win for master so basically canvas is a rectangular area where you can draw okay so you have the height and width for canvas i'll give in the width to be 500 and height to be 500 i'll also give in a background color let it be pg equals sky blue you can also have a cursor for it so let the cursor type be dot box you can give an arrow circle clock cross exchange heart as a cursor type there are a lot of cursors in Tinker. 
So you can see how many arguments you can give in for canvas. You can have border, border width, background, highlight color, insert border width, etc. So I'll just give in these parameters and then I'll pack this visit. I'll write canvas.pack. Then I'll get on to creating the figures. So first of all, I'll write canvas dot create arc. I'll give in the x1, y1 and x2, y2 coordinates. So that's basically the starting and ending position. So I'll write 5 comma 10 and 100 comma 100. Then I'll also create a line, a simple line that is parallel to the x-axis. I'll write canvas dot create line. And I'll give in the starting and ending position 0 comma 80 and 500 comma 80. So you do not need to specify the x1, y1 pair and x2, y2 pair separately. Tinkter knows how to pick the coordinates if they are given in the correct order. Similarly, to draw an ellipse or an oval, I'll write canvas dot create oval and I'll give in the top left and bottom right coordinates of the rectangle in which the oval would be contained. So I'll give in 200 comma 200 and 400 comma 400. Fine. Then I can also give in a text. So let me use this as the heading for the canvas. I'll write canvas.create text. The starting position would be 250 comma 10. And the text, let it be using canvas. Cool. You can also give in bitmaps. You can also draw bitmaps. So I'll write canvas.create bitmap. And let the coordinate, let the location for the bitmap be 210,50 and bitmap equals quest head. So you have a lot of kind of bitmaps. You can take error, gray 75, R glass, info, warning, question. I have taken quest head. Then uh, you can also try creating a polygon. So I'll write canvas.create polygon. To create a polygon, you would need the corner coordinates of the polygon. So I'll make a list for that. I'll write points equals. I'll make a list. So I'll try to make a hexagon. So let the coordinates be 100 comma 100, 120 comma 100, 140 comma 120, 120 comma 140, 100 comma 140. 80 comma 120 so there are six pairs and 12 points okay so for the argument of create polygon i'll write points and i'll fill with color pink so that's all i'd be drawing for right now i'll call in the main loop i'll write win dot main loop so let's run this and check our canvas So as I run this, you can see that the screen is of a specified size that is 500 comma 500, the canvas size. And if you expand it, you can see that the canvas is not extended. Okay, it's to a specified size. You can see the arc, you can see the bitmap, you can see the line, you can see the hexagon, you can see the oval. So the oval turned out to be a circle because the coordinates that we gave in were 200 comma 200 and 400 comma 400. They are the coordinates of a square. Not a problem. And uh, you can also notice the kind of arrow we have within the canvas. Outside the canvas, it's just a normal arrow, but inside it, it's a dot box. So that's it about drawing on a canvas. You can make a real canvas like a paint app using Canvas by Tinker, but it requires events. So since we're not still done with events in Tinker, we would do that later. 
you can check out how to get images on a canvas try to do that and also try to make some complex shapes on the canvas i hope you will be able to do that thank you hey everyone today we would be talking about radio buttons and check buttons they are another type of widgets they can be used while making a form so this is a very simple program to make it a bit interesting what i would do is i would give in commands to these buttons whenever the buttons would be filled in the specified function would be called and the function that i would define would declare another tinker window and uh, show us some message for that i will use canvas widget we have already discussed it in the last video so let's start writing the code for it from tinker i'll import star and i'll have my window master window i'll write win tk brackets i will also give in a title i'll write win dot title let the title be radio buttons cool. then i will have an int variable so i'll write v equals int var so this int var would be used to control the variable value for the radio button or check buttons it would be used to set its current value option now this int var function can hold integer data where we can set integer data and we can even retrieve it using the getter and setter methods for right now just remember that v int var is used to set the value of radio button or check button okay now i will have my radio button i'll write radio button and i want my radio button on the window so i'll write win and the text that i want is radio button one and variable i will give in to be v and let the active background be pink and active foreground be purple and the command i told you i'll be giving in a command so the command name would be pre okay so i'll define this pre what pre would do is it would show up another window with the text value accepted now how i would do this i would use canvas and create text function by canvas so i'll write wind equals tk here i have another window for tinker i'll write c equals canvas where i want the canvas i want it on the window so i'll give in wind and background color let be light green then i'll pack this canvas i'll write c dot pack then i will create text i'll write c dot create text let the coordinates be 100 comma 10 let the text be value accepted I'll fill in with purple then the font let it be 16 cool then I'll run the main loop I'll write wind dot main loop okay now let's get back to the main code I've given pre as command and now I will use grid for this because i want the radio buttons in a specific line or a row so i'll write dot grid row equals zero right i will have another radio button so i'll write v2 equals int var radio button then text equals radio button 2 variable 
there would be V2, active background, let's keep it the same as above. Then command free, fine. And for grid, now the row number would be one because I want it in the next line. So I'll write dot grid, row equals one. Similarly, you can have the check buttons. They are very similar. It's just the difference of the symbol. So I'll have variable one equals int var, check button. window where I want it. I want it on the window and text check button one variable is var1 and again I'll give in grid. I'll not pack this. I'll use grid and row let it be three. If you're given the same row number then the things would overlap and you would not be able to see the radio buttons so given a number greater than one or zero then i'll have another variable var2 int var check button win text equals check button two variable var2 and grid row 4. Fine. Then I can run the main loop. I'll write win dot main loop. So let's run this and let's see if everything works as we have defined it. If we can call on to 3 as we given the value for radio buttons. So I can see the radio buttons and check buttons on the window and when I click on the check buttons, they get checked, nothing else happens. But when I click on the radio buttons, I can see another window popping up with value accepted message and same as with the other radio button. If I click on it, I can see another window. So. We could actually give in the command and execute it properly. So giving in this command also helped you in practicing Canvas once. That's it about radio buttons and check buttons. You can check out once what all arguments we could give to radio buttons or check buttons. Thank you. Hey everyone. So to display text on the Tinker window, we just have learned about the create text function in Canvas, but we also have label and message to print a message on the screen to get text on screen. So we haven't discussed that yet. That's what we are going to talk about today. We will learn about the label and message widgets. There is just a little difference between label and message. Let's write some code to check that out. So from Tinker import star and I'll have my window write win tk packets I'll give in a title I'll write win dot title display text let the title be display text now I'm gonna add my widget that is message and I'll give in a variable I'll write my message equals message and where do I want that? I want it on the main screen. So I'll write win comma what is the text that we want to display? So the text equals hello everyone kindly pay attention we are learning tinker cool and then we'll give in a background color 
I'll write PG equals pink. Okay, then I'll give it an aspect. So aspect is the ratio. So basically, it's aspect ratio. It's the ratio of width and height in percent. The default is 150, which means the width would be 50% greater than the height of the message box. So you can think of on your own what aspect you would give in. I will give in an aspect of 500 and then I will give in border width. It will be 5, BD equals 5. I'll also give in a type of border relief equals ridge. I'll give in a padding, pad x equals 10, just along the x-axis. Okay, also the foreground, let it be dark blue. Fine. I can also give in a font, let it be ink free, 14, and italic. So that's the way you can give in a font. That's how you describe a font in Tinker. Then you can just look up what all arguments you can give in per message. So we have already described master. We have not talked about anchor. So anchor is used to decide where the text should be placed in the message widget. It can be north, northeast, the top right corner, east, southeast, south, southwest, or center. The default is center. Do not get confused between justify and anchor. Anchor is for position, whereas justify is like alignment. Okay. Then we have aspect. We just discussed it. We have decided the background and border and font for round color too. We know about justify. We can give in a padding, pad Y and pad X. We know about relief. We know about text and you can also give in the width, but I have not given it. That's fine. I have already given in the aspect. Then I'll get to the label. I'll write label equals label. So for the master, it would be win again. And then text, let it be label widget does not allow multiple lines okay so this is a fact label widget would not let you get a long text in several lines there is no line wrap up option so it will just Cut off the text that does not fit into the specified height and width. So if you have mentioned a smaller size, the text will just disappear and not all the text would appear on the screen. Cool. So this is one difference between message and label widget. There are many, but this is a major one. Then I will give in the border size, let it be 8. Let the background be sky blue and I'll have a cursor for this. Let the cursor be cross. Foreground let it be yellow and I'll also give in a font here. I'll write Georgia 18 italic. Relief, raised, height, let it be 2, and I'll not give in the width, let the label widget decide it on its own according to the text. Now I'll pack this, but first I'll pack the label, then I'll pack the message. Okay. Now let's see if the packing order affects the order of display. Or is it the order of defining the widgets that decide in which order the widgets would be displayed? So I'll write down label dot pack. I'll simply use pack and then 
I'll also pack the message widget dot pack. Now I will call the main loop when dot main loop. Fine. Let's check out how the label and message widgets work. Hey everyone, today we are going to talk about the menu widget in Tinkter. It is basically to create a menu bar or a list like menu. There is nothing complex about it. Just try to understand how things are working as we write the code. So from Tinkter, import star and I'll get the window. I'll write win equals tk. I'll also give in the title. I'll write win.title. Let the title be menu. Then I'll add the widget. So this widget would be declared with a variable menu, which will be the main menu and that would contain the sub menus to be displayed. So I'll write menu equals menu. And where do I want this menu on the window on the master window? So I'll write when. So I'll have this main menu where all the other features or objects will be contained. Like this is the main list that will contain elements with sublists. Now I would need to add this to the master window. So I'll write dot config menu equals menu. This config function can be used to overload. If you have an object in Thinkter that is already configured and you want to edit some of those configurations, we use config. Now we'll create the elements of the main list. So I'm going to create a list with picking tools, the size of the tools and then its color. So let's do it. So first would be tool equals menu and within brackets. You can see what all configurations you can give in to this menu widget. So for master, I'll give menu. I'll give in a background color. Let it be gray. Let the foreground be black. I'll also give in active background. Let it be sky blue. Then I need to add this tool object to the main menu list. Okay, so I'll write menu, the variable menu, dot add cascade. That is how you add any object to the main list, main menu, and label equals tool, and menu equals tool. Now I'll be adding some options to the tool object. So I'll write tool dot add command. You can also add in check buttons and radio buttons, but we'll just stick to command for right now and label equals pen. Then I'll add some more options. I'll write tool dot add command. Label equals brush. Then tool dot add command label equals pencil. Then tool dot add command label equals eraser. And command equals so I'll give in a command to this whenever you click on this option this given command should take place so command would be 
when dot quit then i'll have another menu object the size so i'll write size equals menu and it's the part of the main menu so i'll write menu in brackets then i'll add the size object to menu so i'll write menu dot add cascade label equals size and menu would be size okay i will not decorate this i'll just keep it to default to check out what the default is then i'll add the options to the size object so i'll write size dot add command and label let it be 1px and similarly i'll do for 3 4 and 6px so i'll just copy this down i'll write 3px 4px and 6px cool i'll have another element for the main menu, I'll write colors equals menu and I'll give it an active background for this. Let it be light green and the background let it be light yellow. Okay. I'll add this colors to main menu. I'll write menu dot add cascade. label equals colors menu equals colors and i'll add the options to colors I'll write colors dot add command label equals red colors dot add command label equals yellow and colors dot add command label equals blue and i'll call in the main loop i'll write win dot main loop now you can see that even for these options you can give in configurations you can have a background color a foreground color a different active background etc Please check them out too, they'll help you practice. Now let's check out how the menu works, how the menu widget works, how it looks like. So I have my screen and you can see tool, size and colors on the menu bar. They are the part of the main menu and when I click on each one of them, they display a new menu. Okay, so that's the sub list. So I hope you get an idea of how the list was, how the menu was organized. And you can even add further lists. So please try doing that too. That would be a practice. And when you are quite comfortable with menu, you might also look up for menu button. Try to pick out the differences and benefits of menu button. What options menu doesn't provide, menu widget doesn't provide, but the menu button does. So that's it about the menu widget. Thank you. Hey everyone. Today we're going to talk about message box in Tinkter. So without declaring a new screen, you can have fun. But its functionalities are limited. So let's check what I'm actually talking about. Basically, I will declare buttons and the commands would contain functions that call the message boxes. We can have many types of message box. As per our requirement, we can have the show info, show warning, show error, ask question, ask OK cancel, ask yes, no, ask retry cancel. These all are functions available in the message box module. Now we'll check them one by one. Let's get started. So I'll write from Tinkter import star and also from Tinkter 
import message box. You need to import this message box module separately and then I'll get the window. I'll write win equals tk brackets and I'll also give in a title. I'll write win dot title. Let the title be message box. And then I'll also specify the size of the screen. So I'll write win dot geometry 400 cross 400 in double quotes. So that's how you can specify the size of the screen. This is a new thing. Then we will define the functions one by one. They would be given as command for each button. So first of all, I'll use the show info function. So I'll write def show info brackets. And I'll write message box dot show info. So the first string would be the heading of the message box. So I'll write important because this is just an information. And for the message, I'll write this might take a minute. Okay. Then similarly, I'll define some more functions. I'll write something for show error. So I'll write def error and message box dot show error. The title would be error and the message would be the specified path does not exist because this is an error. You can give in any messages as per requirement. Then I'll have something for ask question. I'll write def q message box dot ask question. And I'll write title h and the message would be are you 13 years old or above question mark. So in ask question function, you'll have two options to select from, yes or no. And accordingly, you can select. Then I'll define for ask OK or cancel. I'll write def cancel. You can name the function anything. It's just what function you call. Then I'll write message box dot ask OK cancel. And let the title be delete and message be are you sure you want to delete question mark then i'll have the function yes no so i'll write def yes no brackets and i'll call the ask yes no function write message box dot ask yes no and let the title be confirmation and the message be are you sure you want to proceed so ask yes no also gives you two options to select from yes and no so you might think that ask yes no and ask question functions are same but they're not the ask question returns yes or no string, but the ask yes no function returns a boolean, true for yes and false for no. Okay, then you also have the ask retry cancel, so I'll define a function for that too. I'll write def retry. Now for this function, you will have two options to select from, retry and cancel. Now if you click on retry, this ask retry cancel function returns true and if you click on cancel it returns false so just to give you an idea of what is happening i'll declare a variable for this function which will store this boolean so i'll have r equals message box dot ask retry cancel let the title be failure 
and the message let it be do you want to try again question mark and if r is true if r then i'll print retry i'll simply print retry on the console and else i'll print cancel cool then i'll move on to the next function i'll have this show warning function so i'll write def warn and message box dot show warning let the title be warning in caps and let the message be this might lead to malfunction of the app okay now i have all the functions for all the buttons now i'll declare the buttons one by one and assign them these functions we have seven functions so we'll have seven buttons so let's start b1 equals button and where do i want my button i want it on the window so i'll write win text equals information because first i'll have the show info command so command equals show info background let it be sky blue foreground let it be white active background let it be light green then i'll place this button i'll write b1 dot place and x equals 100 y equals 100 so i'll simply give an a coordinate and similarly i'll have all my buttons so i'll just copy this and edit the next ones so for b2 i want it on the screen so i'll write win as master then text would be error command would also be error and the rest let it be same i'll change the coordinates to 100 comma 200 right 200 okay then in b3 i'll have when text let it be retry command would be retry i have my retry function and then let the rest be same let the decoration be same for the button and i'll have the coordinates as 100 comma 300 so y would be 300 then again i'll have b4 i'll change the text to question command will be q u e and i'll change the coordinates to 200 comma 100 so x would be 200 y would be 100 then b5 let it be cancel command will be cancel and the rest would be same then the x coordinate let it be 200 y let it be 200 okay then i'll have b6 text let it be yes no yes or no and command let it be yes no coordinates will be 200 comma 300 okay then b7 let the text be warning command will be warn coordinates will be 300 and 100 okay and i'll call in the main loop 
write when dot in loop. I hope there is no confusion. The text for buttons is what would be displayed on the buttons. The command for the buttons are user defined functions which contain the message box widget functions. Okay, so you should be very clear about all this. Now let's run this and see the buttons and check out the message boxes, how they are popped up on the screen. So I have my screen and I can see the buttons as defined and I'll click on each one of them. I get a sound too. So this important is the title as defined and this might take a minute. So this I symbol is there and I have to click on OK because that's the only available option. And I have question and there is a question mark symbol. I have two options. So there are differences in each function and for warning I have an exclamation mark symbol. Then for cancel I have a question mark again but the options are different. I have OK cancel. Then for retry, there is retry cancel. And when I click on retry, I can see retry printed on the terminal because that's how I defined it. Now that's pretty much it about the message box widget. Thank you. Hey everyone, we have covered almost all the widgets in Tinker. We are left with a few, so let's just take a look at them. We will discuss the scale, scroll bar, list box and spin box. They are very easy to understand and there is nothing complex about them. So I'll just get all these widgets on the same screen and let's start writing the code. I'll write from Tinkter import star. You don't need to import any separate module for these. Then I'll have my screen. I'll write win equals tk and then I'll give in a title. I'll write win dot title. And let the title be scroll. So I'll add my first widget. I'll give the name scale. I have the variable scale. Equals scale. That's my widget. So it is like a slider that lets you pick a value. And it has two methods, get and set. So let's just give the options for this. Where do I want the scale? I want it on my window. So I'll write win. And you have this from and to to specify the range of the slider. So I'll write from equals zero to hundred. Okay. I'll give in a background. I'll give it to be light yellow. Then a foreground. Let it be black. You can give an orientation for vertical and horizontal so I'll give an orient equals horizontal then I'll give in a label so let the label be scale widget there are many more options like the rough color the slider relief the kind of slider you want you can give it a command, you can have a font description, you can have resolution, you have slider length, you can specify the length of the slider, then you can specify the state of it, you can have the cursor, then the border, etc. So we have given enough options and let's pack this widget. I'll write scale.pack. Cool. Now I'll go to the spin box. I'll write spin box equals spin box and for the arguments I'll give master equals win again we have from and to so from 0 to 10 you can also give in a negative number for from you can start from a negative number you can go to a negative from number but uh, there should be a difference there should be a positive difference between them so you can give in accordingly the range, uh, but we'll do it from zero. And then I'll give in a background color. I'll write PG equals light gray. 
ft equals orange and let me give enough font i'll give the font to be arial 12 italic it's just the number uh, you can even not give him the font for a spin box too we have a lot of options some are same as the scale widget but there are some things that are different so you have button up relief and button down relief then you have this increment parameter it can be a float then you have this x scroll command option so you can give in a command that you want to take place when you scroll through the values that is when you increment or decrement the numbers in the spin box and i'm done with the widget so i'll pack this i'll write spin box dot pack then i'll go on to the scroll bar i'll write scroll bar equals scroll bar so for argument i have win as master so let's just keep the scroll bar simple uh, it'll just take up a side and i'll pack the scroll bar i'll write scroll bar dot pack side equals right fill equals y so i'll pack this at the right side of the screen and i want to fill the y axis completely with the scroll bar okay then i'll get my list so i'll have this variable list equals list box this is another widget and win as master now what i want to do is i want to scroll through the list as i move my scroll bar so i'll write y scroll command equals scroll bar dot set so i'll set the values according to this y scroll command okay now i'll also give in a font i'll give it to be georgia 20 it's for the list okay and i'll have the background color to be sky blue cool now there are many methods associated with the list box widget uh, to insert the values in a list box we would use the insert method so what i'll do is i'll write for i in range 51 i'll just make a list with 51 lines and i'll write list dot insert end so i need to give in the index and end would represent the point immediately after the last character entered by the user so end for the index and for the element i'll write string i plus dot we are checking the list and scroll bar together okay now outside the for loop i'll pack this widget i'll write list dot pack side equals right fill equals y expand equals true okay so that'll give me a good format now i want to configure the scroll bar again because i want to add the list to it okay so I'll write scrollbar.config. We have already discussed the use of config. Config is basically for overloading. And I'll write in the argument command equals list.yview. Okay. So this tells the scroll bar that whenever the scroll bar is scrolled through, the list should also move along the y view, okay, the y axis. Now I can call the main loop. I'll write win dot main loop, and let's just run this and check out all our widgets if they're working together and working properly as we have arranged them. So I have my scale widget, and you can see how this bar moves and gives us values. Then you have your spin box. You can increase the value first and then decrease it but the values will only go from 0 to 10. We also have the scroll bar this thin line along the right of the screen and 
as you scroll as you move the scroll bar you can see the list moving up and down along this we have the list elements as we specified them and that's pretty much it for this video i hope you understood the widgets thank you hey everyone today we're gonna talk about the events and event handling in tinker we would focus on the bind function and talk a little elaborately about the main loop so events handling is an important part of tinker module in this video we would try to understand the basic things associated with it and in the next video we would see a related example okay so we would try to make the program a little interactive by giving user inputs from the keyboard so that would be very much done by the event handlers okay so let's start writing the code for it i'll import or i'll write from tinker import star then i'll get my window i'll write win equals tk then i'll give in a title i'll write win dot title let the title be event handling okay so i told you i'd be telling you a little more about the main loop so whenever you create a tinker application we have always been calling the main loop okay at the end so why do we call the main loop what the main loop actually does it checks whether an event has occurred or not it checks for an event occurrence of an event so if there is some event that has occurred then the written code the code that the user has given would be executed so as the main loop has checked for an event occurrence the program written will be executed as a response okay so you need to write the code that will be executed in response to an event okay so you write these functions called event handlers for the events that you use in your application okay now i would be creating a very similar event handler for every time i press a key on the keyboard i should get that key printed on the console okay not the tinker window but the console so what i'd write is i'll write def so i'll have a function for that i'll write def pressed key and in brackets i'll write event i'll give event as an argument and i'll write print event dot car so that simply completes what i just said i want to print whatever i clicked okay so now we would move to the bind function to call an event handler whenever an event occurs on a widget or function or method we use the bind function okay the event handler is said to be bound to that event because it's called every time the event occurs okay and how do we do that we'll just write for our window win dot bind okay and the first parameter would be the sequence so it's just a string of the form event name okay i'll just write it down i'll write here the event name is key so in double quotes i'll write key and i should give this less than and greater than sign around it okay that's how you write the event name and this event name can be any of tinkter's events so there are many events in tinkter we have enter leave button one button two or key so here it is key and then we'll have the function name okay you can see for bind we have to give sequence and then the function okay so the event handler basically so I have pressed key, I'll write pressed key as the function. Okay, so that completes my bind function. And then I'll run the main loop. I'll write win dot main loop. Now, whenever the main loop would run, it'll check for the event. So I have declared my event here as a pressed key function. Okay, I've given it as the argument. 
and whenever this event will occur what is my event the event is the user giving an input from the keyboard while by pressing a key okay so whenever this event occurs this function would be carried out okay this part of code would be executed as a response to the event occurrence okay so that's what should happen now let's check if that really happens whenever i click on the key i should see that key printed on the console okay let's do that so i have this tincture blank screen okay and i'd not do anything with the screen but i just start typing something and uh, that should be typed out on the console automatically without me taking the con uh, cursor over there okay so let's do that i'll just press d and there it is uh, you can see it on the console and then you can see t and then you can see q and let me press a numeric let it be one i'll press shift one okay and then i can press m and i can give in any character okay this was an semicolon and an inverted comma so that's it about this program i just wanted to show you how interactive tinter can be and we'll see a related example in the next video thank you hey everyone we have already discussed the event handlers but we are left with the tinter events let's discuss a few of them in brief so first up we have the button event when a mouse button is pressed with the mouse pointer over the widget we make use of this event then we have three parts of mouse the middle the right and left so accordingly we have button 1 button 2 and button 3 okay then we have motion we would be working with this motion event as an example we would see an example related to this event so we have b1 motion b2 motion and b3 motion for the current position of xy members and uh, then we can have button release we can have double button we also have enter so enter is for telling that the mouse pointer has entered the widget we also have leave as a complementary to enter so this leave event would be used when the mouse pointer leaves the widget okay and then we have focus in and focus out so focus in is to focus on a widget and focus out is to move to other widget uh, move the focus to other widget okay then we have return we have key we have shift up and we have configure so these were the tincter events while understanding these event handlers we used the event key and uh, this time we would use the motion event so let's write a program for it so let me tell you what i'd be doing so i would write a program for getting the current position of mouse on a widget only on a widget okay so let's do that so i'll write from tincter import star then i'll have my window i'll write win equals tk Then I'll give it a title, I'll write win.title, brackets, and let the title be event handling. Let the widget be canvas. Okay, so I'll have C equals canvas. And where do I want the canvas? I want it on the window. So I'll write win, comma, background color equals pink. And width, let it be 500. And height, let it be 400. Okay, and uh, now I'll use the bind function. We discussed the bind function last time. So bind is to call the specified function whenever the specified event takes place. Now I would specify two arguments. One would be the event and one would be the function. So I need to make that function too, but before that, I'll write c dot bind, and now let's define the function. I'll also name the function as motion. So I'll write def 
motion and I'll give in the argument event we did this last time too because I want to check the event if the event has occurred and uh, the related things to the event okay so I just want to check the current position of the cursor on the widget so I want to print that so I'll write print brackets f current position of cursor is in curly braces event dot x comma event dot y and I'll put this in a bracket so that would get me the current position of the cursor and about this f format this is a very basic way of getting values of variables within a string in python so i hope you know about that and then i'll just simply write return in the function okay so i can get back to the main part and i'll give in the arguments i'll write within single inverted commas i'll write motion and i'll also give in the function to be motion okay that i just defined Fine. Now I'll pack this. I'll write c dot pack, and I'll run the main loop. Okay. So let's run this and let's see if we get the mouse coordinates. So I have this pink screen, and whenever I move the cursor over it, I get the positions of the cursor constantly and whenever it stops the output has stopped but if I increase this screen and you can see that outside this widget there is no such output seen but on this widget I can get the current position of the cursor so that's it about the event handling so we have covered a lot of tinker and the more you practice the more you get the concept clear so in the next video we would be seeing some application of tinker it would help you implement all that you have learned thank you hey everyone Till now, we have learned a lot about Tinker widgets and their functionalities. It's time we put them to use. So today we would make a simple dice on the Tinker window using the random module and the button widget. It would be a six-sided dice. So on rolling a six-sided die, you get a number and that's what would happen here. We would get a number in between one to six randomly picked by the random module. So basically, whenever I click on the button, I should see a number randomly displayed on the screen. So let's get started. I'll first import Tinkter, or rather I'll write from Tinkter import star, and I'll write win equals tk, and win dot title, let the title be dice, and I'll have the widget, I'll add a widget, so I'll write button equals button. Where do I want the button? I want it on the window, so I'll write win and I'll give in the width to be 20 and background to be light yellow. Then I can give in the foreground to be blue and I'll leave the command for right now just write command equals and we'll talk about it later a little later then I'll give in a border of 3 and relief let it be sunken an active background let it be white And the text displayed on the button, let it be roll in caps. Okay, 
then I'll pack this I'll write button dot pack now I would also need label widget in order to display the chosen number by the random module so I'll write label equals label so that's the widget and win width let it be 20 so that the button and label are in some alignment and background color let it be sky blue foreground let it be purple okay now i will define a function that would assign the value of text parameter of the label widget so i'll write def pick number so in this function a random number would be picked in between one to six and also that number would be assigned to the text parameter of the label so that would be displayed on the screen so how would i do that it's very simple so i have def pick num and i'll write label text so this is a dictionary label object and I'll assign the value str string random dot rand int one to six. Okay, so a six sided die has six numbers on it, so I have used rand int so that I can include both one and six. So this piece of line picks a random number, converts it into a string, then assigns that to the text of label. Now I would have this function as the command for the button widget. So this is a dictionary label object. So I have simply accessed the text parameter of this label widget that I created just now. Okay. And I have assigned it this value, this randomly picked string. Okay. Cool. Then I need to pack the label too. So I'll write label.pack. So I left the command of button widget empty. Now I'll just give in the function pick num. Okay, so whenever we click on the button, we are calling the pick num function and it assigns the labels text a random number in between one to six. Okay, so we're done with what was required and I can simply run the events loop. I'll write win.main loop and that's it. So let's run this and let's check if we get randomly picked numbers. So I have my screen and when I click on roll button, I can see new numbers appearing, random numbers appearing. So that's the use of the random module. And it's working quite fine. So here we combine two widgets together to get an application you can do the same and the more you practice the more you'll get better at it the more easily you'll be able to handle the widgets in linkedr i hope you understood this example it was simple thank you hey everyone today we would create a simple app that converts a temperature in fahrenheit to celsius if I talk about the main things required, we would need the function that simply converts Fahrenheit to Celsius, that formula. Then we would need the user to input the temperature. For that, we would use the entry widget. We haven't talked about it yet, but it's very simple to use. And we would also have a button widget, which gives the output on being clicked. Okay. So it is a very simple app. Let's get to the code right away. I'll import Tinker. So I'll write from Tinker, import star, then I'll get my window, I'll write win equals tk, I'll have a title, I'll write win.title, let the title be temperature converter, okay, then I'll start adding the widgets, first I'll add the frame on which I want that text box, so I'm declaring a frame for it because I also need to put in the label widget. I would need the symbol of degree Fahrenheit. So I would add that label to the same frame. Okay. So I'll write frame equals frame. 
and where do I want it? I want it on the window, so when as master and I'll pack this, I'll write frame dot grid and row equals zero and column equals zero and I'll give in a padding, I'll write pad x equals ten. So there is no overlap on the screen boundaries. Okay. Cool. Then I'll get that entry widget that text box how do i do that i'll write temp1 equals entry so that would allow the user to enter any text into that uh, text box okay and for the arguments where do i want it i want this entry widget on the frame so i'll write frame and width let it be 10 cool then i'll use grid I'll write temp one dot grid row equals zero and column equals zero. Same as the frame. Okay. And I'll have an F variable for that label for that symbol of degree Fahrenheit because I need to tell that this entered number is in Fahrenheit and that number would be converted into degree celsius so i need to give in the units so i'll write f equals label and i want it on the frame so i'll write frame comma text and this is something different you might know it you might not know it but i can easily get degree fahrenheit symbol by this so i'll write in capitals degree fahrenheit and there is a slash n before this and it's in inverted commas cool now i'll pack this too or should i say use grid so i'll write f dot grid and row would be zero and column would be one okay simple now we are done with the frame now i would need the button that would convert or that would call on to the function of conversion Okay, so first let me get the button. I'll write button equals button and window. I'll not get this on the frame. I'll just get it on the window. Okay, and text equals a right black arrow. So how can I do that? The similar way I got that degree Fahrenheit symbol. You can get numerous symbols like this. So here on the button, I'll get a rightwards black arrow. So I'll write an inverted comma slash n and a rightwards black arrow. Fine. For the command, I'll define the command in some time. First, let me make the function. And I'll give in a background color, let it be sky blue. Okay, that's it. So let me define this function Fahrenheit to Celsius. That would be my function. So I'll write def Fahrenheit to Celsius and brackets. So I'll write f equals temp one dot get. So whatever you entered here in the entry widget you'll get it over here okay that would be the value of this f variable okay so then i'll get the c that stands for celsius right now i'll write 5 by 9 so this is the simple formula for conversion of fahrenheit to celsius so i'll write f and minus 32 okay i'll also convert this to float because there is a 5 by 9 class. So I'll write float. Cool. And now I will display the C variable as the text of another label widget. So let's do that. I will have temp2, which would be the converted temperature, the temperature entered in degree Celsius. Okay. So I'll write temp2. This widget is not, this variable is not still declared in the main function. We will do that in some time. So temp2 in brackets text equals 
F in inverted commas round C comma 2 to two places and curly braces closed. I'll also need the symbol of degree Celsius here just like we got that degree Fahrenheit symbol there. I would use that here too. So I'll write slash N and degree Celsius in capital. So now I'll get to the main function again. I'll write up this command. I'll write Fahrenheit to Celsius and I'll use grid for this button. I'll write convert button dot grid row equals zero column equals one and pad y equals 10 fine and I need to define this temp2 also okay so I'll write temp2 it's the label initially let us keep it as degree Celsius symbol and then it would be reassigned every time we click on that button after we enter a value okay so we have temp2 equals label again and win and text let it be slash n degree Celsius. Fine, and then I'll use grid to place it. Write temp2 dot grid row equals 0, column equals 2, and pad x equals 10. Fine. So I'm done with the app. I'll call in the main loop. I'll write win dot main loop and run this. So I have my screen again, this temperature converted. And let's try for 100 degrees Fahrenheit because we know it's 37.78 degrees Celsius. So I'll just write 100. And nothing else and I'll simply click on this button so I have 37.78 degrees Celsius so this temperature converter is working fine let's enter some other value let's enter 0 0 degree Fahrenheit is minus 17.78 degrees Celsius and this would even work for negative values of Fahrenheit so I'll write minus 11 degree Fahrenheit so it would be minus 23.89 degrees Celsius cool so that's it about this app hope you understood everything thank you hey everyone another application made using tinter can be a text editor we haven't yet explored the file dialog module by tinter it needs to be imported separately the module provides classes and factory functions for creating file or directory selection windows. We have native loads, static factory functions, convenience classes. Convenience classes help in creating files or directories from scratch. While static factory functions are user responsive. So the text editor that we would make would have two static factory functions, open and save. So let's start making the application right away. I'll import Tinker. I'll write from Tinker import star and from Tinker dot file dialog import ask open file name ask save as file name. We would use the ask open file name for opening a file for editing and the ask save as file name for saving the current file as a new file. Now I will get my window. I will write window equals tk and window.title so the title can be text 
put it there. Fine. Now, I'll get a text widget to insert multiple lines so that I can write on it. A text editor needs inputs, so this is how I'll give them the inputs. And even for displaying some text, I need a field, so I'll use the text widget. So I'll have this variable text equals text. Where do I want it? I want it on my window, so I'll write window. Foreground, I'll set some foreground. I'll give it purple, the foreground. And background equals light yellow. That would be a nice combination. And font, let it be Calibri 14. Fine. Then I'll pack this. I'll write txt text dot pack. I will get a menu now to have the open and save as options, just like in a text editor. So I will name the menu file. For that, I should write menu equals menu. And on the window, so window. Now I'll configure it. I'll write window.config menu equals menu. And now file menu equals menu and in brackets again menu. Now I'll add the options. First to the main menu, I'll write menu dot add cascade label equals file and menu equals file menu then to the file menu i'll add open and save as so i'll write file menu dot add command label equals open comma command for now i'll leave it blank and file menu dot add command label will save us and command again let's leave it blank for right now and I'll call window dot main loop fine now I need these two functions open a file and save a new file so the first function to open a file, let's define it. I'll write def open file brackets and I'll write file path equals ask open file name file types equals in a list in a tuple text files comma the extension for them star dot txt and again comma and a tuple all files comma the extensions This statement will open a dialog box so that the user can select the file to be opened. Since we are working with only text files, I could have only given the tuple text files. But what we have written now lets you access all the kinds of files that can be presented or read by the text editor. Now, after the dialog box is opened, it might happen that the user clicks on the cancel or closes the window. So for that case, I'll write if not file path, if no file path is selected, you return, no further code is executed. Otherwise, I'll delete whatever is there currently on the text editor. I'll write txt.delete. I hope you remember txt was our text widget and I'll delete whatever is there on the text editor currently. From index 1, so 1.0, till the end, E-N-D. Fine. 
now I need my text file to be read the selected file to be read so for that I'll write with open file path as an argument mode should be only read so R and you can pass an encoding UTF dash 8 as input file text is equals to input file dot read now this string as read is inserted in the text editor so I'll use the insert function of the text widget so I'll write txt dot insert and text fine and finally I should change the title of the window to the file path okay so I'll write window dot title f simple text editor and file path so this is a python format for getting the values I hope you know this and okay now very similarly I should define the save file function too so I'll write def save underscore file and brackets okay so this would be for saving the current file as a new file firstly I need to create the file path to get the location of the file to be saved so I'll write file path equals ask save as file name default extension dot txt so how the file should be saved with the extension dot txt unless specified and file types again similarly in a list then in a tuple text files and the extension star dot txt again you can give in the all files or not it's your wish then all files and star dot star fine now again if the screen is cancelled you do not need to run any further code for that I'll write if not file path return otherwise a new file is created the text on the text editor is extracted for the same so how would I do it I'll write with open I'll give in the file path I already have it mode now would be W so that it is writable encoding equals UTF hyphen 8 as output file okay now text equals txt dot get from 1.0 till index end okay the output file gets the text so I'll write output underscore file dot write text and again the title needs to be changed to file path so I'll write window dot title f simple text editor and file path in curly braces and that's pretty much it for the two functions now I need to pass these two functions as the commands for the two menu options so I'll write for file menu 1 command equals open file where the label was open and for save as I'll write the command save underscore file we are good to go let's run this and see if the text editor works properly So I have the window and please note that the title is text editor. It would change later. I have a light yellow background. I have this file menu and I can have open and save as as options. So I'll just type in something. I'll write this is a tincture application, a simple text editor. And I'll save it now. I'll click on file. I'll click on save as. 
and I have this pop-up window and it is asking me the file name so I'll name it as thinker and I'll click on save now I'll again go to file and click on open I will click on thinker and I'll click on open so here I have my text that I just saved the title has also changed to file path so this was a simple text editor thank you hey everyone in this video we would make a simple paint application using tinkter we would use many new methods and a lot would be from the canvas class obviously as we are working with paint don't worry it would be very easy so to make this application we would use the color chooser module and just to make things more organized i would make main class that would be later called onto the screen let's get started so from tinkter import star and separately from tinkter import color chooser and ttk ttk you'll get the use of it later now the window declare plus its title so we have win equals tk and for the title i'll write win dot title paint app then i'll call on to the main loop so win dot main loop so i have the basic structure now the class main where I would be defining the functionalities of the paint app. So let's get started. I'll get the class. I'll write class main. And first the init function, def init. For argument self and master. So this master is the window that when that would be passed on later to the main class and then i'll write self dot master equals master for initializing the window now i need to initialize a lot of variables to start doodling on screen like the color of my pen its width maybe the screen background the starting position of the pen etc so let's initialize the variables one by one so first is self dot color underscore foreground equals black so the pen color becomes black initially you can change it later and then self dot color underscore background equals white then also the initial positions so i'll have self dot old underscore x equals none and similarly self dot old underscore y equals none also the pen width self dot pen width equals five I will call this draw widgets function that is yet to be defined which would describe the layout and main functioning of my paint app so I'll just write self dot draw widget and brackets you'll just understand why I called this here later on when I define the draw widgets function now I'll write self dot c dot bind now here I have started using event handlers. The bind function called for the canvas C. C would be declared in the draw widgets function. Now the argument for this event handler bind would be B1 motion which is the mouse being moved while the left mouse button is held down. And the function called the other argument of the bind function would be self.paint. This would be another function in the main class and it would be used to draw the lines on the canvas. So I'll write self.c.bind b1 motion self.paint. 
okay now similarly i'll have another event for the button release to specify the button release of left mouse button i'll use button release fun event and for the function of this event i will call the self reset it is another function in the main class i have to declare it it will indicate the end of one curve drawn okay so i'll write down self dot c dot bind and button release one self dot reset four now i'll define the paint function so i'll write def paint self comma e so e would be the coordinates of the current mouse position i would fetch that repeatedly in order to draw a curve and if self dot old underscore x and self dot old underscore y is true it's if it's available then i'll create line i'll use the canvas function create line and I'll write self dot c dot create line and as argument I'll give in the four points the four coordinates so self dot old x and self dot old y and e dot x and e dot y the current events the current mouse positions x and y coordinates the width of my curve would be given by self dot pen width as I have defined it in the initial function and fill equals self dot color foreground and cap style would be round it's just the style of the curve the line and I can do smooth equals true so we have already used create line in the previous videos and so I hope you don't need any explanation for the arguments given. And I'll replace the value of old x with e dot x and self dot old underscore y equals e dot y. This would let me draw a continuous line. And then I'll have the reset function. Again, it's self and e, the current position of the cursor. And I'll have self dot old underscore x equals none and self dot old underscore y equals none because basically I have ended one curve so that's what reset means now I'll start defining some options available some functionalities available with the paint app now the first one in the functions would be def changed width and I'll give self comma width so this would be used to change the width of the pen width of the line and I'll have self dot pen width equals width okay and I have clear canvas so I'll write def clear canvas self and i'll use the delete function from canvas self.c.delete and argument would be all that would just actually clear the canvas completely i'll also have the functionalities of changing the foreground and the background of the screen so first for the foreground changing i'll write def change underscore fg and self so self dot color underscore fg equals color chooser dot ask color color equals self dot color underscore fg and one so color chooser dot ask color returns a tuple that contains two values that represents the selected color the one at the zeroth index is the RGB value and the second element of this tuple is the hexadecimal color value.
and since our color uses hexadecimal values i have given the first element of this tuple as the argument okay and similarly i can define for background color i'll write def change underscore pg and self and self dot color underscore pg equals color chooser dot us color and color equals self color underscore pg and in square brackets one fine also i need to write self dot c pg in inverted commas equals self dot color underscore pg cool now it's the turn of draw widgets function so this would be like the real layout of the frame of the entire canvas of the entire screen so i'll write def draw widgets self and now the screen should have the controls in one part and the canvas on the other so we need to divide the space available for that we use frames so i'll write self dot controls equals frame self dot master i hope you remember the master variable it was the screen itself the window and i'll give some padding i'll write pad x equals 5 pad y equals 5 now on the left side i would need the controls like the pen color the background color let me put these in a menu also the clear canvas and exit option should be available there then to adjust the size of the pen that is the width i would use a slider let's get all this on the screen first so starting with the label of the pen width controller i'll write text pw equals label self dot controls text equals pen width font equals georgia 16. now i got this on the frame and not the window itself please note that and i'll put it in a grid i'll write text pw dot grid row equals zero column equals zero then i'll have the slider i'll write self dot slider equals ttk dot scale this is where ttk is used i'll have a different kind of slider it would not show me the numbers on the scale and so for the argument i'll write self dot controls comma from equals 5 to 100 to equals 100 command is self dot change w so just to recall what change w did it changed the width of the pen it assigned a new value to the pen width and the orientation of the scale of the slider would be vertical fine now i'll we'll set the pen value pen width so i'll write self dot slider dot set in brackets self dot pen width okay now self dot slider dot grid row equals zero column equals one now i'll pack my frame i'll write self dot controls dot pack and side equals left fine now here i'll declare my canvas so self dot c equals canvas self dot master where do i want my canvas on the screen on master so self dot master width equals 500 and height equals 400 background color equals self dot color underscore pg it was there in the init function so that is where from we pick the background color 
then I'll pack this canvas. I'll write cell dot c dot pack fill equals both expand equals true. We've already worked with canvas and frames and labels a lot of times. So I hope you're getting what is going on. It's just the assembling of all that we have learned. It's nothing difficult. And now I need to get the menu. So I'll simply have this menu variable equals menu self.master and self.master.config menu equals menu and I'll have my option menu to which I'll be adding all the options available. So option menu equals menu in brackets menu. It's in the menu of the main menu. Okay. I hope it is not confusing. Now to menu, I'll be adding the option menu variable. So how would I do that? I'll write menu dot add cascade label equals menu menu equals option menu. Now let's add the options to the option menu. So I'll write option menu dot add underscore command label equals brush color command equals self dot change underscore foreground similarly for the other functions i'll write option menu dot add command label equals background color command equals self dot change background then option menu dot add command label equals clear canvas command equals self dot clear again option menu dot add command label equals exit command equals self dot master dot destroy so we have four options, one for changing the pen color, the foreground one, one for the background changing color, one for clearing the canvas, and one for exiting the canvas. Okay, so we're good to go. Okay, but we need to call in this main class. So I'll write main and in brackets win. Fine. Now we're good to go. And let's run this. So I have my window and I can see this menu and pen width. So I'll start right away doodling on the screen. And I can see the line I've drawn. And I can change the brush color. I can pick any color. Let me pick this. And I have a different color pen now. Let me change the width once. So it has a better width now. The brush is thicker and I can change the background color too. So here it is. The background color is different. Again, I can clear the canvas. Everything is gone. And if I click on the exit option, the screen goes away. So the paint application is working pretty much fine. This was it for the program. Thank you. Hey everyone. In some of the last videos, we have learned the basics of Tinkter. All that we need to make an application with Tinkter. So another application that we can make using the Tinkter module is the ciphertext application. So to actually encrypt and decrypt the message, we would use the one-time pad module, 
but to give it a GUI interface, we will use the Tinker module. If you are not familiar with cryptography and cipher, you can read about it in the description. So as I told you, we would be using one time pad for encryption and decryption purposes. Let's import the module. Also, this might not be pre-installed. So you can just run the command pip install one time pad. So you can write that in your terminal and you are good to go. So now we would import that module. I'll write import one time pad. Cool. Also, let's import the tincter. I don't want to write tincter dot over and over. So I will just import everything from tincter. And this is how we have always done it. From tincter import star. And then you get the window. That is your GUI interface. You will write win equals TK. And also we can give it a title. Write win dot title encryption. Cool. So what I'd be doing is I would create a function for encryption. Decryption is similar. I would discuss it, but to execute it is your task. So coming back to the encryption part, I should have an entry box for entering my message that I want to encrypt or encode and another display box for the encrypted value to be displayed. Also, I would need encryption button as the function should only be called after entering a value. So let's first create the entry fields and their labels. We will have two labels, one for entering the original message and one for the encrypted message. So if you couldn't follow what I said, you will just understand as I write it. So I'll first have my variable for the first label for entering the message, which is OGMSG. So it's just a short for original message. And I'll write label. Where do I want this label? I want it on my window. So I'll write win. And what is the text that should be displayed in this label? It is enter message cool. then I'll put it in a grid I'll write OGMSG dot grid in order to display it where do I want this message uh, or label to be displayed or to be placed that is on row 10th and column 1 Working with row and column is more easy to visualize. So that's why I've used row and column. And I'll get another label that is for getting the encrypted message. So I'll write EMSG equals label win dot text equals encrypted message. And then I'll put it in a grid again, emsg dot grid. And related to the position of the other label, I'll put the row equal to eleven and column equal to one. Okay. So there goes my label, and the label would be the text that is already displayed on the screen. So now we will create the text box using entry widget of Tinker. You might note that we haven't used the one time pad yet. We will use it only in the encryption function. So I want two entries, one for entering and another for displaying the result. So I'll have E1 equals entry. And where do I want it? I want it on the window. Let's keep everything simple and try to understand what's happening. Then I'll put it in a grid again. I'll place it. I'll write e1.grid and row equals 10. Now, since you have placed one object somewhere on the screen, relative to that, you can arrange the other objects also. Okay. So I'll write row equals 10 and column 
equals to okay and similarly i'll have the another entry a2 equals entry and win and e2 dot grid row 11 column 2 okay now finally i'd be creating the encryption button so let me write it down i'll write encryption button equals button and it is win i want it on the window so i'll write win and text should be let it be encryption because that's the function that would be carried out background color let it be gray it's a normal button and foreground let it be black and now for the command i'll just leave it blank because i have not defined the function yet and i'll pack this encryption button i'll write encryption button dot grid row equals 13 column equals 2 fine now i'll write win dot main loop now let's just define this encrypt message function so i'll write i'll just go above a little scroll up a little and i'll write def encrypt message and i'll have this variable message which will be the original message that would be encrypted that you want to encrypt and where will i get it from i'll get it from my e1 the first entry that i'd be making and how do you get that in tinkter you can write message equals e1 dot get and brackets and then to encrypt the this message i can write i'll have another variable that will hold this value i'll have cipher text equals one time pad dot encrypt this is an inbuilt function it will automatically encrypt the message that has been given as an argument i'll write message because that's the original message that i want to encrypt and i'll write random this random gives you what kind of a key you want so i just can have any random kind of key i hope you know what key is for a cipher text if you don't please read the description now i'll insert this value in the second entry that i created e2 so how will i do that i'll write e2 dot insert and zero comma cipher text the zero in the argument is for the starting position of this cipher text from where you want the cipher text to be displayed so the command for the encryption button would be encrypt message i'll just type that down and now we are good to go let's check this once and encrypt the messages So I have the window now, let me enlarge it a little and I will just enter some random text or message. Let me write hello and I should get something encrypted, some kind of code for this hello. Okay, so I'll write hello and I'll cl click on the button encryption. So here I go, I have some code, some encrypted message some cipher for hello so that's pretty much it about this program for decryption you can use the decrypt function in one time pad module and you can carry out pretty much the same what we did in this application thank you hey everyone in this video we will try to make a registration form using tinkter there is nothing to be explained about it as done in some of the last Tinkter applications. It is just assembling all that we have learned in Tinkter. This is more like a practice session. So let's get started with the code right away. From Tinkter import star, 
and also importing to dot message box now I'll add my window root equals tk also I'll set a specific size of the window let it be 500 into 500 I will put that in inverted commas the form looks cleaner this way moreover it's been long we have used place to position objects mentioning the window size lets me manage coordinates easily then I'll also give in a title I'll write root dot title registration form since we are making a registration form it would be registration form cool also let me give my form a little background so I'll write root dot config background equals hash f f e 6 f 0 now this should be in inverted commas also this is a light shade of pink you can also pick any random colors from color picker now I will make a very simple registration form it will have five entry fields two for the complete name first and last name then a date of birth field a country field from which country the user belongs which will be a drop list a language selection checkbox and a radio button for gender selection okay so i'll just quickly declare all my five variables as string variables and if you cannot recall what string variables were they were usually used with the widgets entry and label since there are going to be many entries, I would make use of string var to manage them effectively. I will not give in any arguments as they are directly contained in the master window. So first name fn equals string var brackets. Last name ln equals string var again. Dop, the date of birth, equals string var variable equals string var 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 c1 equals java this would be our checkbox one for the language selection var2 equals python var c3 equals c++ and then a radio variable again a string var this var variable would be used for country and okay i would also like this information to be uh, displayed later on the console after i have submitted the registration form so i'll have a function for that i'll write def print entry brackets and column first equals fn dot get so first would be my first name variable you can take any variables that's not a problem and then for the last name i'll write second equals ln dot get dob1 equals dob dot get variable1 equals variable dot get var3 equals var c1 var3 equals var c2 var3 equals var c3 now these three were repeated because you would be selected something from the checkbox only one option and accordingly the option would be fed in later on okay now i'll have my variable 4 equals radio underscore war dot get cool now i'll just print it so how i'll print it just follow along you know this already I'll write print f the full name is 
first in curly braces and second in curly braces with a space in between. Then print f your age is dob1 in curly braces again and print f your country is in curly braces variable 1 then again print f your selected programming language is variable 3 in curly braces again and print f your gender is in curly braces variable 4. Now I'd be calling this function when I'd be done with my form filling. So I'll also have this tincter.messagebox.showinfo just to give the user a pop-up that uh, your form has been filled. So as the message, I'll write congratulations. This would be the heading of the pop-up box, the message box. And the message displayed in the box would be user has successfully signed up. Now I'll start with the labels, the text things and the entry fields. So let's start with the heading. I'll have a heading registration form. So I'll have a variable heading equals label. Where do I want it? I want it on root. The window I have and text would be registration form. Let me decorate it a little. So I'll write relief equals solid. Width equals 20. Font Arial 19 and bold foreground is hash b30047 and background is hash ff e6f0 now I'll place the heading heading dot place x equals 90 y equals 10 Fine. Then for the first name, I'll have a variable f name equals label. It's just the text, not the entry field right now. So label and root text equals first name and colon. Width equals 20. Font equals bold 10. Background equals ff e6f0. Now I'll place it f name dot place x equals eighty y equals seventy. Fine. Then for the entry field of the first name, I'll write e f name equals entry root text var equals fn okay now fn was the string variable that we declared above i hope you remember this is how we have used it and i'll place it i need to place the entry field also so it should be on the same y axis and so i'll write ef name dot place x equals 240 y equals 70 now very similarly for the last name, L name equals label root text equals last name colon width equals 20 font equals bold 10 background equals again hash ff e6 f0. Uh, so I'll place it L name dot place x equals 80 
y equals 120. Now the entry field for the last name, I'll just copy it from above and change the text bar equals ln. Then I'll pack it. Again, I'll just copy it. The last entry field. X-axis would be same. Y-coordinate would be 120 now. Fine. Then moving on to the date of birth, label and entry. I'll have date equals label. Root comma text equals dob. Width equals 20. Font equals bold and 10. Background again would be FFE6 F0. And I'll place this. I'll write date dot place. X equals 80. Y equals 170. Fine. Then the entry field. EDOB equals entry. Root. And text bar equals top now i'll place it e dop dot place x equals 240 y equals 170 fine now i'll have the country and that would be your drop down list so first the label country equals label where do i want this i want it on the window so i'll write root so the text would be country of course text equals country width equals 20 font equals bold 10 foreground equals ffe6 f0 you can just copy it from above and change the text part and country dot place x equals 75 y equals 220 now i'll give in a list for the drop down box and let's have it let's have the list now list equals let me give in some names of country nepal india america China, Canada, Japan, South Africa and you can give in names of any countries and a lot more countries and I'll just make it a drop down list now how do we do it so drop list equals option menu it's again a tincture function and root and variable variable would save the value of uh, the list whatever was selected and where the values would be selected from the list so star list fine now to set the value i'll write var dot set select country Now drop list dot config. Since the drop list values that is var can change, so I need to configure the drop list. And I'll just give in the width equals fifteen. So I'll just place it. Drop list dot place. X equals two thirty eight. Y equals two twenty. Now again, I'll have a label for the language. Language equals label. Root. Text equals programming language. Width equals 20. Font bold and 10. Background same as above. FFE6 F0. And I'll place this variable language. Language dot place. x equals 95 and y equals 270 fine now i'll have the check buttons 
c1 equals check button root text equals java variable equals var c1 dot place now here i'd be placing this all together without taking it separately and x equals 235 y equals 270 just copy this entire statement twice because we have two more check buttons text would be python for the second one c2 and where variable would be var c2 and i'll place it somewhere else that is x equals to 90 and y equals 270 similarly for c plus plus var c3 and i'll change the x coordinates also fine now for the gender i'll have the label i'll just copy it from above because everything is same just need to change the text that is gender otherwise width font and background color they all are same and i'll place it somewhere else i'll write gender dot place x equals 73 y equals 320 fine now for gender i'll have radio buttons i can have male and female so r1 equals radio button root text equals male variable equals radio underscore war value equals male dot place x equals 230 comma y equals 320 copy the same r1 make it r2 and text would be female also the value would change to female and x coordinate would change to 290 fine so i had all my five entries and i'll have two buttons now one to quit and another for submitting the form so i'll have submit equals button root text equals submit width equals 12 background equals ff 4d 94 foreground let it be white command equals print entry and i'll place it x equals 130 y equals 400 I'll have the quit button so quit equals button root comma text equals quit width equals 12 background and foreground same as above and command would be exit and I'll place it x equals to 80 comma y equals 400 and I'll call in the main loop to root root dot main loop it's good to go now we should not have any problem in the code let's run this and check it so I have the window the registration form I'll just quickly fill in some details you can see the labels and the entry fields for the first name, I can fill in person1. For last name, I can fill in last name. Date of birth can be 12 slash 04 slash 2001. I can select some country. See, there's a drop list. And let me select Canada programming language let it be Python gender I'll click on mail and I'll submit so I have this pop-up box message box 
Congratulations, user has successfully signed up. When I click on submit, I have this printed on the console. So this was it about the program. Thank you. Hey everyone, in the last video we made a form, a registration form that was very basic and the information attained from it was just printed on the console. Now in this video we will get that entered data in a table, in a database. We will save the information in a table. So for that we have the SQL Lite model to carry out data related function. Now the entire program would be same except the print entry function. Let me copy the program. I'll go to registration form.py, control A, control C, and I'll just paste it over here, control V. Fine. Now I'll import SQLite 3. And if you don't have the module, you can always download it using the command pip install SQLite 3. So I'll write import SQLite 3. And I'll just delete this function, def print entry, and in place I'll write def database. I'll get the variables, so I'll write first, just like print entry. I'll write first equals fn.get. Second equals ln.get, last name. The first name is done. Then dob1 equals dob, the date of birth, dot get. Then variable1, one, var1 one equals var dot get. This was for the country. Then variable3, three, var3 three equals var underscore c1. Var3 equals var underscore c2 var3 equals var underscore c3 fine then the radio button var4 for the gender equals radio underscore war dot get now till here the program was same as the print entry function it changes when I start connecting this data with the table or the database. Now, how do we do that? I'll write, I'll have a variable, c-o-n-n, that is for connection, equals sqlite3.connect. And in brackets, I'll give in the name of the database. Okay, so I'll write form.db. This is to establish a connection to SQLite. You need to pass the database name you want to connect. Okay, that was form.db. If the specified database is not present on the disk, then a new one would be created by SQLite. Otherwise, it will connect to the one that is already present. Now, if there is a connection established that was done by dot .connect, I'll write with con, C-O-N-N, Cursor equals con dot cursor. Now this is another function by SQLite to create a cursor object to execute SQLite commands queries from Python. Okay. Now to create a database to add values to it, SQL commands need to be executed. And since we are doing that in a Python file, I need the cursor object. Okay. Now I'll write cursor dot execute. And in inverted commas, I'll give in the SQL command. Okay. So execute is used to run the SQL query and return the results. Okay. So create table if not exists. Student, which is the name of the database or the table. SQL commands are not case sensitive but they are preferred to be written in uppercase. Then brackets, I'll give in the field names, f name, and what type of entry would be made, it would be text. 
and then l name and also text dop it is a date so i'll write date and country text again programming language i'll write prog language it is also text and gender which is also text then close the brackets and the inverted commas again i'll have another statement sql statement i'll write cursor dot execute in inverted commas insert into student f name l name dob country prog language gender and what values would be inserted values brackets i'll give in six question marks for six fields inverted commas close and comma the value of these question marks can be first these variables where we get the value of the string wars first second dob1 war1 war3 and war4 fine these were just the two sql statements that i needed and then i'll commit i'll write conn dot commit and brackets to make changes to the table to confirm the changes committed okay and also i need a pop-up box after i've submitted the form so i'll write tinker dot message box dot show info uh, we can print in the same message congratulations and for the information the user has successfully signed up brackets closed inverted commas closed and the rest would be pretty similar we have all the entries we have the labels we have the entries we have the drop list for the country then we have the check buttons the radio buttons but here for the command of the submit button i'll change this to database instead of print entry and the rest can remain the same now let's run this let's fill in the form and then we'll check the database so i have my form now i'll fill in this registration form twice just to have some data when i'm checking the database the table so for first name i can write a b c and for last name i can write x y z then for the date of birth 12 slash 03 slash 2003 i'll select some country india programming language let it be python and gender male and i'll submit i have the pop-up box and i'll click on ok and i'll quit Again, I'll run this. We can give in the first name MNOP, last name QRST, DOB can be 10 slash 10 slash 1980, and I'll select a country. Canada again maybe and programming language can be Java female and I'll submit I have the pop-up box and I'll quit now it's time to check the database for that you need to download something and that's database for SQL Lite. you can just search the same statement database for SQL Lite, and you'll find this first link and when you click on it you will see downloads and you can download the required version 
So I installed the standard installer for 64-bit windows. Now once you've installed it, installing this is very easy. You can go with the default settings and you just need to check the tincture folder in which you are saving all the programs and there you'll find this form.tb and you can open it with database for SQL and you can actually see the table you will find this interface so you can see we have our table student it has the specified field names when I click on browse data you can actually see the table that we have filled in so this was all about the program we learned how to use SQLite 3 along with Tinker and SQL in Python. I hope you understood what we did. Thank you.